Greetings, citizens of the Empire. I just watched Rebel Moon, and so this is going to be a review of Rebel Moon, striking while the iron is hot, so to speak. You know this is a Zack Snyder film from the moment a phallic spaceship tears through a giant space vagina. You know right away that this is a Zack Snyder film. All of the Zack elements are there. The, the comic book style shot framing is beautiful, but it's very Zack Snyder. Um, a needless overuse of slow-mo. The rule of cool style over substance. Uh, fanatical attention to little pieces of visual detail. A rich and vibrant color usage. Um, like the whole thing was shot by an Instagram addict. You know, all of the stereotypes are there. But there is a film here as, as well. I mean, wouldn't say I'm a Zack Snyder fan per se, but I, I did find myself liking this. Yeah. I'd, I'd like a few of his films, by which I mean... Dawn of the Dead, 300, Watchmen, Sucker Punch, Rise of an Empire, and Army of the Dead was was okay, but not so much the rest. Uh, you could sarcastically call him the thinking man's Michael Bay, <laughs> which, which isn't saying a great deal, but he's at least nerd media literate. He respects the genres that he works in. He knows the genres that he works in for the most part. Maybe drop the ball with Superman. Yeah, but you get the feeling that he's a fan of the kind of material behind everything that we're talking about. Perhaps we've just been, I've just been so let down by the ruination of other franchises, that this looks good, it looks better than it actually is. I, I, I don't know. This is a sort of instant my feeling reaction, having just watched it. Yeah, it started out supposedly uh, as a Star Wars pitch, and you can certainly see that um, <laughs> in a lot of it, from the evil empire to the uniformed baddies who look a bit more Soviet the Nazi, I would say, but there's also a Napoleonic element to it, and they're wearing gorget, um, like sort of 18th century soldiers as marks of rank and, and so on. So, yeah, th th there's more to it, and it is different, but it's also familiar, and it's worth remembering that Star Wars itself started out as a, a pitch for a Flash Gordon film, which we later got from Dino De Laurentiis thank goodness and Star Wars became its own thing so this is still its own thing even if it's coming from a set of inspirations and so on that you that you can see um, I've heard other reviewers criticize Snyder for wearing his influences on his sleeve but so did Star Wars and so did the first couple of seasons of the Mandalorian and I I think that's what made those so good. The influences of Kurosawa cinema serials like King of the Rocket Men and the aforementioned Flash Gordon and so on. And Zack wears his influences on his sleeve here. Uh, Metal Herlant, um, Korean swordsman in shows like Kingdom, uh, Vikings, nods to 300, Greek and Roman history and mythology, shades of the Napoleonic or of Imperial Russia and all kinds of other parts. Uh, you can see influences from Lynch's version of, of Dune while we're getting a much more po-faced and accurate version of Dune in the cinema now as well. And obviously, most obviously of all, there is obviously, to use the word obviously a little bit more obviously, uh, the Seven Samurai, which is basically what this is. We, we've already had a sci-fi Seven Samurai in Corman's uh, Battle Beyond the Stars, which is 
I, I think a great film I, I love the spaceship and that Nell and a lot of the same footage was reused in Space Raiders and so on uh, Corman was the king of B-movie sci-fi for a while and I have a, a weakness for his corpus of work I, I'd even say particularly with Space Raiders even more than Metal Beyond the Stars and I love those films so this is a generation on not influenced by the media of the 40s and 50s so much 30s as well I guess but by the media of the 70s and 80s the comic the adult comic books uh, the the magazines the kinds of films that we had there the kind of grindhouse and uh, cheap sci-fi B movies from then from the drive throughs right so this is a glorious B movie with an A movie budget which represents quite a lot of risk <laughs> on the part of Netflix in making it which is something to be welcomed um, I'm not without my criticisms it's too long it's too padded out the climax is rather unsatisfying this didn't probably needs to be a two-part film any more than the magnificent seven or seven samurai or battle beyond the stars needed to be and the world building still somewhat lacking though you get the feeling it's all there from the details that you see the Zack Snyderisms have become somewhat cliche and tired over the years since the early days of his career and honestly he's a bit hit and miss when he's not adapting someone else's material directly you know if if he only made Frank Miller films forever I'd probably be more of a fan or at least other you know other comic creators works because that suits his style and his attention to detail and his respect for the material maybe you throw in some cooperation with Robert Rodriguez there to stop him being too self-indulgent one thing that really did strike me and harmed the film, I think, and is going to harm its, its, its ratings and its reception, is that this should have been R-rated. It wanted to be R-rated. You could tell where it had been cut and shot around and toned down, and it really suffered for it. Now, the, the extended director's cut will be R-rated and should be out, I think they say, by summer 2024. Hopefully, with some gratuitous nudity and gore to give it a bit more impact during the fighting scenes and so on. But this version definitely suffers for being neutered, and I really think they shouldn't have done that. They should at least have put the R version out at the same time, I think, to give people options. Because I think that's where it's going to play to the source material that it's coming from. You know, the, the Grindhouse, the B-movie, the exploitation films and so on. And that's it's just going to give it that little bit, something extra, I think. I, I know that analysis sounds shallow, but it would reframe, reframe and up the stakes and so on on the whole film and make it a lot more engaging. Now, as an RPG guy, it would be remiss of me. Uh, not to mention the Evil Genius Games controversy. They wrote an RPG for Rebel Moon and then had the deal kind of ripped away from under them and all the source material that they put together uh, kind of uh, confiscated. Um, now they're suing. I think they filed suit in September. We don't really know how that's going. I don't much rate their chances. But you know this kind of b-movie sensibility really does lend itself to rpgs in a way that is often better than more highbrow material and taking really really b-movie style films and plots and so on and putting them into an rpg and then adding your own spin and so on to them elevates them as well at least that's what i've generally found particularly with 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 horror movies horror novels and so on taking those plots and giving them a once over polishing them up often makes for a more satisfying experience than the film so i think you could take a lot of inspiration from this for 
playing, say, Machinations of the Space Princess or White Star or Starfinder, anything that's not too hard science fiction. D6 Space would also work very well. That seems obvious and a, and a tie back to Star Wars, of course. Now, I haven't gone over the plot and so on. Um, there's elements of Star Wars, you know, Curse Your Sudden But Inevitable Betrayal um, and, you know, Seven Samurai. I mean, you know, you know what you're going in for, but there's no point in me going over it for that reason. So how would I score it? Style-wise, it's a Zack Snyder film, so you know it's highly stylistic, um, movie video-esque, very nicely shot, very nicely framed, um, anti-naturalistic <laughs> in terms of cinematography. I, I would give it a low five because it is lovely just sometimes it's a bit too much and the the Snyderisms get to be a bit too much so a low five or a high four if you're more cynical in terms of substance you can tell it's there behind the film but it doesn't really come through you never s it's a bloated film but you never spend enough time on any one particular element to get a proper taste for it. So substance wise, um, a low a low three. So that's four out of five, eight out of ten, possibly closer if you're more cynical uh, to a 3.5 out of five or a seven out of ten. I think it's important going into this movie to to manage your expectations. Just think Roger Corman with too much money and you'll have a pretty good time I think. Zang. Machinations of the Space Princess is an old school RPG with a sci-fi setting. The rules are familiar and at once innovative. Opened up so you can play literally any alien species you can envision. Purchase it at RPG Now or Lulu.com. Subconscious. You say it. You even think it. Yeah, I had it. 